Hey everybody, we are here with Kipto Tyrus, and we are here to talk about his woodwork, his artwork. He's just a Lexington visual artist. He's one of the ma many, 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 many people out of Lexington. Lexington's full of talent. We are here to showcase some of his stuff today. Kipto, tell me a little bit about yourself, my man. Um, well, I'm from Nairobi, Kenya, and um, I, I pretty much... Uh, like to call myself a visual artist and uh, I, I do a lot of sculptures, I do a lot of drawings, installations, you know, uh, anything that will just appeal to your eye. Awesome. I try to figure it out and make it happen. I mostly deal with uh, the human form and the human condition and uh, I, I always want to include some, some sort of human form in, in my uh, in my work and you know it'd be like you know a human form with an animal or interacting with a car or you know it's just maybe probably just a piece of the hand uh, uh, just a hand you know or a side of your face you know your leg you know it's a little miniature to complete to you know interactive you know uh, natures of how we, we as human beings are uh, and so to mention like a, an artist I, I like is this guy called Bernini that's uh, uh, he's, a, he's a good uh, renaissance artist of, of course I like Picasso um, I like uh, I like uh, Martin Parrier he's a really great woodworker um, I like uh, metal uh, in terms of metalworking you know there's, there's a lot of you know, realistic and abstracted forms. So I, 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 I I'm a little bit uh, iffy on that. You know. but, on, the, on the metallic, metallic. Yeah, there's a lot of people out there who's doing it. You know, especially in America. I have, I have a piece on on Basile's Road. It's a, it's a headdress uh, form, and it's, it's. I call it the, the Nomad's Palace. This is pretty much, you know. Uh, so the headdress is this little um, you know when like my, 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 my ancestors and, and my, my community back at home in Kenya you know like these are, these are pastoralist people who are nomads moving from one place to another okay. and they carry like really simplistic objects to, to, to where they're going because you know it's, it's, a, it's, 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 it's from one place to another you, you need to be as, as, as light as possible. And so this headdress, every, most, most of the men actually have this thing as a, as, a, as, a, as a pillow or as a rest for your head. And, you know, there's a lot of symbolism coming with the, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's something directed from, um, inspired by the Egyptians, you know, like when the Pharaoh died, they put him in his pyramid with, with a golden headdress or something like that. But you know, it's that communication between you, the human being, and into the the art itself. It's kind of like a a, a deep a, a conduit into into like the underworld and into the spiritual world, you know. And so, to me, that is something you know. I I magnify that thing in terms of what it's been been done with and what inspires you know my 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 whole generation, you know. Absolutely. I, you know, I was going to ask, like, walk me through your, like, do you get a piece and you already know what you're going to do with it? Or do you get a piece and you just go with it? Like, I, I mean, take, what's your pro mental process here? It's, I mean, it's incredible looking around. Um, I, I have different ways of tackling uh, a piece or like a, 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 I have an idea in my mind, probably. And I, I there's different ways I, I, I embark on you know, trying to solve problem solving and, you know, working with materials and, you know, material is really like a very important part, uh, part of my, of my process, you know. So the material actually, uh, the material pretty much generates the ideas to what the form is going to be. It informs it pretty much, you know. And uh, so if I'm working with wood, that's a totally different case if I'm working with metal or if I'm working with stone. Or if I'm working with plaster or clay, you know, especially now that you know, I'm, 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 my my 
my you know sweet spot is pretty much wood but i try <laughs> to you know blend in different materials in, in, in every time i'm working with it but if i look at piece of wood like this you know if one if i i got a commission from from a client you know there's an idea already in my mind this is what you're gonna do put a sketch you know design it and you know go through with the client and decide on it and go with, you know run with it but if I'm just like, you know, in my studio, you know, jamming and wanting something to go through, you know, I, I walk with the wood, you know, it's a, it's a total seduction game for me. You have to like, hey, what's my, what, I, what, what do you want, you know, what do you want to be, you know, and then there's that what, you know, you see in, at, at a first instance, you know, like, oh, this one, you know, I can see this one wanting to, to come out of that wood, you know, like an angel from a piece of wood, you know, but then, you know, you're going to walk with first you're gonna work with the grain of the wood you know you're gonna work with the type of wood you know there's walnut there's cherry all these different kind of oak uh, behave differently as when you work with it so you know there's always that appeal that you're gonna go for because of the wood wood type itself you know but most of the time my process is you know I, I go like non objectively most of the times you know <laughs> having in mind that you know the human form is the basis of my uh, the forms that I create, you know, I, I, I try to be non-objective about it, you know, if, if you know, what, whatever the wood is going to present itself, um, the, 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 the one thing is how are you going to communicate this with your, with your, with your um, observer or, you know, you, the lookers, the people who your appreciate the, the audience. Thank you. So your audience, you know, would, would want some, something like, it's intriguing something that is pretty much like provoking you to look at it you know you have my, my, my most important thing while, while I'm working with it you know I look at form and space so most of the times I, I want to create space on the wood because you know if you have a trunk of wood you know this this it's a lot of solid thing it, it gets boring when you when you just like walk on it as, as you know the round but once you get into through the wood, you know, for me, it's, it's like a different, it creates to me a different platform into the mind, you know. It's, it's something like, uh, uh, first it introduces you to the piece, you know. Look at this, this is where I'm going for, you know, there's this dimension, there's this depth, there's this, you know, you, when, when you interact with it, to me, I always want to have those spaces creating your, your mental images into the 3D space, you know, and, and so, if if it's it's if if it's so well like you know uh, representational or abstracted, there's a uh, different you know levels and layers of interpreting you know just one piece you know different people see different things and that's what I really really always want to to have in the, in my audiences uh, in the in their in their mind you know to 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 really let them get in there and decide what that piece is gonna be. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. <laughs>